This is Eugene Panrikovich from the Laptop Screen Doc, and the name of the website is www.screensurgeons.com. Today we have a HP ProBook 4320S laptop computer, or as HP calls them, a notebook computer, with a cracked screen, and we're going to show you how to replace this screen. All right, before we do anything, we want to remove the battery to make the laptop safe to work on. On the bottom, there's two levers. You slide inward, and the battery slides out. Now that the battery is removed, we can work on the laptop safely. Okay, this laptop is a little bit unusual in that it requires a different type of screw, and the screws that are holding the bezel in are in a somewhat unusual location. So uh, before we start, Let's go over the tools we're going to need. We're going to need a pair. We're going to need a exacto knife, a pointed blade, a pair of tweezers with sharp ends, and an electronics screwdriver. Now, usually the, we can get away with two Phillips bits, pH 1 and pH 0. But in this case, we're going to need a what is called a Torx bit. T-O-R-X, and it's a T9 Torx bit. You can get that at Radio Shack or an electronics store or order it online. Now, in addition to the Torx bit, we need our standard screwdriver bits, the PH1 bit. PH stands for Phillips. One is the size. And this is PH0 bit, and zero is the size once again. Okay, so before to get to the screen, we need to remove this screen bezel. And in order to get remove the screen bezel, we need to remove the four screws that are hiding behind the main computer assembly. So let's see if we can get a close up. There's two right here and two right here, and they're hiding behind some covers. So the first order of business is to remove these covers with the X-Acto knife, like so. And what I like to do with these covers is attach them to the bezel so that we don't lose them, like so. And get to the last one, and it came off. Okay, when we remove these covers, we see that the Torx spits are removed. It revealed of the Torx screws, and this is where we use the Torx T9 bit. And we have to do it at an angle, so when you, what you want to do is tilt the screen back as far as possible. And at first, you have to apply a lot of pressure to get the screw going. And once you get the screw going, it'll come out okay, so you just unscrew it after you get it going and puts the screws in a pile. So we'll go one by one. So you have to use quite a bit of pressure first so you don't strip the screw. And once it gets going, it's okay. So the screw got lost. And we're gonna find it. And we have the next screw. Let's switch in, see if we can get a better angle. These screws are a bit harder to remove than for most other laptops, so just be patient with this part. Okay, three and We'll get to the fourth. Get the screen back as much as we can. And we got the fourth screw. Now I like to keep each set of screws in a different pile so that when we put the laptop back together, we're not confused by which screws go where. Okay, the next part is removing the screen bezel. And what I like to do for this part. Put the laptop on the side, 
Reach my fingertips on the screen side of the screen bezel and gently start lifting it up with my fingertips and start rolling around the screen bezel. And when you hear snapping sounds, that's a good sign. That means it's coming up, it's snapping off. And if you get stuck in one place, just keep going to a different place that you're not stuck at. Okay, so the only thing we have to do is lift up the hinge covers, and we can do that with our tweezers, like so. And the screen bezel is removed. Okay, next order of business is to remove the screen from the screen assembly and it's held onto the screen with metal mounting brackets with screws on the sides of the screen. Okay, and in order to do that, we have to get to these screws and we have to tilt the screen forward from the screen assembly. And in order to do that, we have to remove these two screws at the top. And once again, we use our Torx T9 bit. One and two. Okay, so now we try to tilt the screen forward a little bit to see if we have enough to get to the screws on the side. Okay, let's take a look. So we have enough to get to the top screw, but not quite to the bottom screw. So for that, I do have a trick, and the trick is to loosen up the screws that are hin holding the hinge assembly to the back of the screen. And I don't think my trick is going to work this time. So let's try another trick. And the other trick is, is to force the screen a little bit so we can barely get to the screw to the bottom. So just barely have enough room and we're going to use a pH one bit. So we barely get to the screw down here. And actually a pH zero bit will work better. So tilt the screen forward just enough to grab that screw on the bottom and start removing it. So it depends on the laptop, you have to use different tricks unless you want to take the whole laptop apart and that entails its own set of problems. So I'd rather not take the laptop apart and use the tricks Okay, so one, and two. When you start first grab these screws, you have to use a little bit of force to engage the screws, and then you can pull it up. The worst thing that you want to do is strip the screws. It's no fun when you strip them. I've done it before. Okay, so do the same thing here. Just lift it up enough just to engage the screw like so, and finally the fourth one. Okay, there's another trick that I have that I'll show you. Now, when you're putting the screen back together, it's a little bit harder to put the screw in at the bottom here than taking it out. So, in this situation, when I put the screen back together, I don't put the screw on the very bottom. There's another screw hole in the middle. So I put the screw in the middle rather than the bottom and it holds the screen just as well and there's less risk of damaging the screen assembly by pulling the screen forward. So when you're putting the soft top back together, put the screw here instead of down here. Okay, and the other thing that I need to mention is when you do this work, you want to have the screen assembly tilted back a little bit so that the screen doesn't fall forward on you when the screws are all released. Okay, so the screws are all off, and then we can tilt, carefully tilt the whole screen forward. All right, and when we do that, we see that we have uh, one connection down here, and this connection is secured by some adhesive tape, which we lift up, like so. and the connector comes out. 
And okay, so there's a trick with this connector too. Okay, when you have a new screen, you it's the biggest source of mistakes that I see is how the connector is connected back. So I'm going to connect it back. Make sure the connector is fully engaged. You hear a little click, and here you see a little clip that clips on top. So I'm going to get a close-up of the connection, see what it looks like. And hopefully we can get a good focus. So, so when your connector is engaged, it should look like this. There should not be a seam between the two sides of the connection. And this clip should slide on there freely. Okay, so make sure your connector looks like this when you have your new screen. Alright, so let's take a look at the screen now. Once again, we're going to remove the connector. Like so, and take a look at the screen. Now, this screen is a little bit unusual in two ways also. The first thing that's unusual about the screen is the screen size. It's a 13.3 inch LED screen. It is an unusual screen size that is not commonly found. Let's take a look at the part number. And that's the part number you have to do your search on. It's N133B6. L01. The most important part is N133B6 and the L01 is not as important. Now when you get your new screen, you want to make sure the connector is on the lower right hand corner. So make sure your 13.3 inch LED screen is not a slim screen. A slim screen has mounting tabs on the side. It's a regular screen with, with screw holes on the side of the screen and the connector is on the bottom right hand corner. Okay, the next thing that you'll notice is this screen has a matte finish instead of the more standard glossy finish. When you do receive your replacement screen, most likely you'll have a glossy finish unless it specifically says it's a matte finish. Okay, um, we at Screen Surgeons have this screen available also on occasion, so you can buy it from us. And what we offer is free email support when you do your installation. And also we have a compatibility guarantee. If the screen we ship you is not compatible, we will ship you the right one. To buy this screen from us, go to screensurgeons.com, click on buy a screen, and there you'll have a short form to fill out and just give the laptop model or the part number of the screen and we'll reply to you with pricing and availability. Okay, and um, that's it. So when you have your new screen, put the connector back as instructed. Then put the screen back in. For the metal mounting brackets, don't put the screws all the way down at the bottom. Put the screws in the middle and on top. Snap on the bezel and then put the four screws in on the bottom and put the rubber covers back in and you should be good to go. And that's it. And once again, my name is Eugene Panrutovich. I'm the Laptop Screen Doc and the name of the website is www.screensurgeons.com. Thank you very much and good luck.